Hey guys, uh, last week we talked about cuticle preparation and also nail anatomy. If you didn't get a chance to watch that video, please go back and do so because it's very important and it's kind of a prerequisite for what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to follow that video with nippers, cuticle scissors, and how we responsibly and safely trim skin to get those clean results that we all want, but making sure we're doing it in a safe way for ourselves and our clientele. All right, let's get started. So last week I took off one hand of my nails and you guys watched me prep it manually just using a cuticle pusher and a nail file. We talked about anatomy of nails which is really important for you guys to understand. Today I want to get into how we actually trim skin, how we make sure we're only trimming dead skin, and how we get that clean look just using regular tools. Um, and making sure that we're doing it responsibly on ourselves, our clients, friends, family, whatever. Uh, one little thing I would like to say is that there are a lot of countries, well maybe not a lot, but there's a few countries and a few states I know of where trimming skin is not allowed. And this mainly applies to people who do this professionally. So if you operate in a place where you are not allowed to cut skin at all, please do not do so. I don't ever want you guys doing something that is illegal in your area or is not authorized in your area. And that mainly goes for people who are charging money for a nail service. That is when the law comes into play. If you're doing this on yourself or you're doing it on friends and you're not charging for anything, you're just dabbling with nail stuff, I think this is really important for you guys to understand. And also if you're a client who receives services, this is also really important for you to understand so you know what to look for when you're getting a manicure and you understand whether or not your manicurist is doing it correctly, okay? So now that I did my little spiel, let's get started with nippers and cuticle scissors. All right, so today we are gonna talk about nippers and cuticle scissors. I'm also gonna talk about how we identify the skin that we're going to trim and what we can and cannot trim. And again, I'm middle of the road on this. I'm not super aggressive, but I'm also not super ginger about it either. I like to make sure that I get a clean result, but I like to make sure I do it responsibly. So we're gonna talk about how we do that. And I'm also gonna show you how you actually use these tools, how you hold them, which is really important because I've seen some crazy ways that have been taught by schools before. And some terminology you guys need to know so last week we talked about the epinicium, we talked about cuticle, and again, if you haven't seen that, please go back and watch it, or if you wanna get a little refresher, go back and take a look at the pictures that I put in that video. We are going to talk about the anatomy or the um, parts of a nipper as well, because that's really important, and of cuticle scissors. Okay, so let's get into the actual tools themselves. Now I have three different pairs of nippers here, and I also have one pair of cuticle scissors. And I wanted to show you the different parts of a nipper so that we can all speak the same language, okay? So every nipper has the same general types of parts on it. Back here, we've got the handle. Now the handle could be like this. It could be one that has a spirally type of loop on it. Lots of different types of handles, but this is the handle, okay? Um, we also have the spring. So again, the spring could be different. This is a double spring. It means that it's got two parts. There's also nippers where there's only one spring where it rubs on one side of the nipper and causes that spring-like action. Just different types of nippers. No nipper is better than the other. It's just personal preference. I was just trying to see if I have one that's just a single spring. I don't. All of mine are double. So this is the spring. This is the handle. We also have the joint, so this is a box joint in here, so it looks like a box. And we also have the jaws, which is this part that closes, and we have the blades, and the blades are this part here, okay? So when we're talking about jaws and when we're searching for nail nippers, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see. Oh. There we go, okay. So you can see that this jaw, when I close it, has a certain length to it. it has a point here, and it's also got the back part of the jaw um, that's back here, like I call it the heel, okay? But if we look at a different pair of nippers, you'll see that there's different types of angles to the jaw, and there's also different lengths. So this one over here, the silver one, has a much shorter jaw than these rainbow colored ones, and you'll also see it's at a very different angle much, much higher angle, okay? Um, and if we 
compare this one. This one has even smaller, so let me just show you guys. This is the silver one from before. Now let's take a look at this one. This one has even smaller jaws on it. Very, very, very short opening, okay? And I just want you guys to see the differences because there are a lot of differences between nippers. Now typically, what you'll see are quarter inch nippers. So quarter inch refers to the length of the jaw, the length of the blades here. Um, you'll see quarter and you'll see half. So this is half. Or sometimes the manufacturer will use letters to describe them. So H or Q or whatever letters they come up with. But it basically determines the length of the blades and sometimes also the angle at which the opening occurs, okay? So I want you guys to see that. But same type of double spring, same type of joint, and same type of handle, but very different openings, okay? So you guys can see that. Now, I prefer to work with very, very small blades on the nippers because I'm able to work in very tiny areas. If you have blades this big, it's very difficult to work on a teeny tiny area like this finger right here, okay? So the smaller the blades, I find it's easier to work on fingers. If you're working on toes or you want something that you can use for um, you know, cutting toenails or nails or whatever, you can use something like this. One thing I'm also gonna say is if you buy a pair of nippers, and usually nippers, high quality ones, are fairly expensive, don't ever use these for anything other than skin. Okay, it'll dull them out really badly. And if you do like to use nippers for removing 3D art, crystals, whatever, designate a pair of your nippers just for removing stuff. So if I show you my pair that I have for just that case, okay. So these are the ones that I use for removing um, 3D pieces and the, the blades here are just completely jagged. It's just because I use them to pinch off all kinds of crystals, all kinds of things. So these are my, these are my ones that I use just for that. And I typically don't, you know, I don't use them for anything other than that. So they're just my kind of nip off art tools. But if you're using them for skin, I highly recommend you only use them for skin, okay? All right, let's talk about cuticle scissors for a second. So cuticle scissors are similar. So they have a handle, okay? but they have a finger opening. They have a joint here where the scissors can glide and they cause that joint action. They also have blades and the blades are typically curved and typically also with cuticle scissors, the blades are extremely thin, especially on the point. And you wanna see that the blades come to a nice point at the end. The thinner that this is, the easier it's gonna to be to accurately trim cuticle skin. Now, what's the difference between a nipper and a cuticle scissor? Well, seriously, it's just personal preference. It's the way that you're trained. Both can achieve the same thing when we're talking about trimming cuticles. Just depends on which one you're more comfortable using. And my personal recommendation for you guys is if you learned how to do nails with nippers, I recommend you stay with nippers. If you learn how to do it with cuticle scissors, stay with cuticle scissors because flipping back and forth can be really confusing. And again, you can decide that you want to become an expert at cuticle scissors and really practice, practice, practice. That's great. That's a great thing to do. But there's really no pressure to use both. Just decide which one you like, which one you prefer, which one you feel more comfortable with and stick with it and become an expert at it because that's going to make a huge difference in your work. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys really quickly because last week we were talking about how we're going to trim this skin and I'm gonna try and zoom in as much as I possibly can for you. Okay, so if you remember from last week, I pushed back my cuticles, I got rid of all of the dead tissue that was on my nail plate and I removed the natural shine from my nail plate as well because I'm in the process of prepping these for product reapplication. Now because I'm in between videos and I let the skin relax a little bit, what I recommend is you gently push back the skin so that you can again see where that skin is. So if you've let the skin sit there for a while, sometimes it's nice to just give it a little bit of a push so that it really helps to show where that dead skin is and where it isn't, okay? So it just kind of helps to give you a little bit of a guide and gets that skin flipped back up again. All right, so the cuticle scissors, essentially what we're doing is we're trying to remove just this white line of skin. 
And when we do cuticle scissors, it's very important that the blades cut straight up and down, so perfectly perpendicular to the skin, okay? So if the cuticle skin is coming out on the nail plate like this, we want the scissors to perfectly cut that skin perpendicular to the cuticle skin, okay? So that dead skin that we're trying to remove, we wanna do it like this. If we do it like this or like this at an angle, it's gonna end up fraying the skin. It's gonna end up overcutting or undercutting and it's gonna either uh, leave too much tissue on the top or it's gonna overexpose the tissue on the top causing fraying and peeling on the top of the finger. So it's very important no matter whether you use nippers or cuticle scissors that you cut perfectly perpendicular and I'm trying to make sure I'm showing you that on camera, okay? So not like this, not like this, but like this, perfectly straight up and down as we're trimming the skin, that's extremely important. Okay, so I am back with my cuticles here, my lovely, lovely cuticles for you. Let's see if I can get my camera to focus. Hello. There we go, okay. So with our cuticle scissors, you're gonna come straight up and down and try and get that lower blade underneath the skin and snip. And you leave it on the nail like so, okay? And then you slide over a little bit more and you cut a little bit more. I'm doing this very, very slowly so you guys can see. And the goal is to try and get one cohesive piece because that means you're gonna get a nice smooth edge, okay? And when you come to, oops, sorry, when you come to the corner, See how the jaws curve a little bit, which helps me out. But you can also come up this way if you want to and trim that off, or just make sure that you really turn your cuticle scissors so that you're not stabbing into your finger and come down like so, okay? Oh, sorry, off camera, okay? So really, really turn your cuticle scissors so that they're aligned with the skin and so that they're perpendicular to the skin that we're trimming. Okay, so I got one whole piece off there. I've got a little bit here, and I got a little piece right here that didn't come off. Okay, so just gently trimming, like so. Okay, and then at the very end when you're done, what you can do is dust off the skin. And again, I haven't used any bits or anything on here. I'm just doing it with a cuticle pusher and scissors, and you can see all the dryness and everything. And what I can do with my cuticle pusher is just see if there's any residual skin I need to take off, and then gently push this back. And that's gonna tuck that skin in there. But again, I'm not going to go crazy on this because I don't wanna start cutting into live tissue. If I literally start going crazy, I could start nitpicking every little area here like this little part right here, okay? This is just skin underneath. It's not actual, it's not an actual flap. See how the flap is gone if I compare the two together? But I'm not cutting into the live skin. There's no blood here, which is really important. And I haven't over trimmed. I'm not, it's not raw, it's not red, it's not bleeding. That's really important to just watch what you're doing. Make sure that you're not over trimming the skin, okay? Now, when we do nippers, it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna zoom out for a second so you guys can see this. The one advantage of cuticle scissors is it's pretty easy to hold them correctly and do straight up and down. Now, most people, when they go to grab nippers and they start to nip, they hold the nipper like this and they start all the way around, right? Nip, 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 nip. Okay, what's funny about this is they're not actually looking at where the blades are. And if I rest this on my finger, Okay, so if I'm just nipping on the top, can you guys see that like right here? Okay, so if I'm just nipping, 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 I could actually be pinching the skin with the heel of these blades without really knowing what I'm doing. And if I'm nipping like this, da, 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 can I see where the blades are? No, I have no idea where the blades are. And these blades are curved. So I'm actually probably nipping with this part back here instead of the actual blades themselves. So what we want to do instead of doing overhanded like this, grabbing our nippers like this, we actually want to 
grab them like this so that we can see the blades as we're cutting. So you're gonna kind of do an underhanded so that you can come up and under and see how I can see the blades as I'm trimming just like my cuticle scissors. We wanna make sure that the blades are perpendicular to the cuticle area. We wanna make sure we can see the blades as we're cutting. And by doing it this way where you grab it like, so instead of, instead of like this, okay, I want you to pick up the nippers, put your hand underneath and grab them like that and then turn your hand. Okay, so it's kind of like you're holding a butter knife and the blades should be towards your client, okay? So now when I go in to trim the cuticle skin, I'll be able to see. So can you see how now I can see? So I can come up like this, I can get that blade up underneath the skin, but when I flip it up, see how I can see where my blades are? So as I'm working, I'm gonna tip the person's finger down so I can see what I'm working on. And I, I wanna always have an eyeball on where that blade is, cause see how the blade is straight. If I were to just nip this down, I'm gonna nip into the back of that heel part of my blade into their skin. So just be very aware of that as you're nipping and make sure you understand what you're nipping on and, and where the blades are. So you just wanna use the very tip of the cuticle nipper, trying to get a nice perpendicular cut coming up underneath like so and I almost have nothing to trim so I want to be very gentle okay And again, I can tuck everything back now that I've trimmed it and dust everything off. Okay, so now on both my fingers, I have that big flap of skin gone, but I'm also not nipping into living tissue. Now I have one little teeny bit here that I could probably take off a little bit more, but I want you guys to be very careful about how far you go with your nipping because honestly, there's two things to this. Um, one is you can absolutely overdo it with the trimming. Take that off just a little bit. There we go. Okay, there. So I'll push this back. Okay, so now I've got both removed here. There's two things to think about when it comes to cuticle nipping. One is, as manicurists, we tend to get very fixated on getting every little teeny bit of skin off, and that can actually cost us a lot of time and also sometimes money, because if you're allotting an hour appointment for yourself, it's very easy to spend a full hour just doing cuticles. And you've gotta remember, you need to clean up those cuticles and get through the rest of your service in the allotted amount of time. Even if the client leaves with perfect cuticles, if it takes you four hours to do it, the client still isn't gonna be that happy. So you need to really keep yourself wrangled as far as how much time you allot for cuticle prep. Number two is even if we're doing perfect cuticle work as far as timeline, we can also be overdoing it as far as how much tissue we're removing. Remember, it's a very, very fine line between what is dead tissue and what is living tissue. And I want you guys to be very, very cautious of what you're doing. I've seen some horrific pictures online, which I can even, I'll, I'll put in the video and show you guys, um, of just people just completely going to town on their fingers. Your fingers should never be red, raw, bleeding, anything after a manicure. And if they are, it's getting overdone. The other thing that's also important to understand is if you're over trimming, you're going to cause the skin to callus over time. The skin is going to respond by overgrowing. And so if you're overdoing it, you're gonna even see that your clients come back with rougher skin, thicker skin, and sometimes you can even see the little lines where someone has over nipped their skin over and over and over again, okay? So I want you guys to be very cautious about what you're doing, how you're doing it, take your time, practice very slowly, use the correct grip, 
make sure you guys are doing this safely and in a controlled environment and do not do this on anyone else until you feel 110 percent comfortable doing it on yourself the biggest way to practice is on yourself not on lemon peels not on practice hands but on yourself and um you know my husband is a great person that i practice on friends family after that but practice really makes perfect and i think that focusing on what we're doing and doing it safely if you have that in the back of your mind you're never going to hurt the person okay because you're always going to be thinking i want to do this safely i want to do this responsibly you might nip someone once in a blue moon but at the end of the day you're not going to be overdoing it repeatedly and that is the biggest thing i cannot stress enough is if you're going to be doing this type of manicuring please make sure that you're doing it responsibly because we can just get completely out of control and i've seen some fingers that it's just i don't know how you come back from that okay so if we go back to our tools um, i'm going to continue to do the rest of my nails i want you guys to practice this as well so push back your cuticles remove the shine and remember last time I didn't do my filing after my cuticle removal, and this is why, because I now have this nice fresh skin, okay, it's not raw, not bleeding, not anything, but it is, it's new fresh skin right here, nice and clean, and if I were to file now, I probably would nick the skin and cause it to bleed or cause it kind of a little bit of an abrasion, so I want to make sure that I leave the skin like this while I'm doing my, um, my, my surface prep. And then I can go in and I can perfect it. And you can see that there is no natural shine even all the way back here. So this just leaves it nice and clean and ready for product application, all right? So I hope you guys will practice this all this next week between our next video. I really encourage you to think about what you're doing, get up close and personal, use lighting to really uh, make sure that you're doing things correctly. Um, and if you want to, you can also get a magnifying glass um, you know, they, they sell them on Amazon. They have little magnifying glasses for crafts. Those are a really great way to really make sure that you can see what you're doing while you're working. Okay, so to close this out, I'm gonna give you a few do's and don'ts. So do's, definitely get your nippers sharpened. Your nippers should be maintained on a regular basis and you should definitely have more than one pair if you are a working professional nail technician. Typically, your nippers, if you're cycling through them, are gonna get dull within about six months. I used to send mine in every six months for sharpening. And where do you get them sharpened? Well, the manufacturer usually has a place that you can send them into, especially if you're buying a high quality brand. Or you can also just Google cuticle nipper sharpening and there's lots of companies you can mail them into. They'll oil them up, they'll clean them, and they will sharpen the blades. That's really important to making sure that you can do that properly. Um, scrutinize what you're cutting. Again, make sure that you really look at what you're doing. If you wanna use a magnifying glass, uh, if you need better lighting in your area, make sure that you're using that perpendicular cutting technique to get the best results and just practice carefully with responsible methods. Always make sure you disinfect your tools. I cannot stress that enough. Even on yourself, it's very easy for us to get lazy with our own tools and not clean them between manicures but they can harbor bacteria. And because we're working on skin, we wanna make sure that our tools are absolutely clean. So use an EPA registered disinfectant. One that comes to mind is leucocide or barbicide or any of those. Make sure it's just EPA registered. Use it per the instructions on the bottle. It's very easy to make your own quats. And you can do that even at home. I wanna make sure that you guys are cleaning your tools properly and that you're not spreading any type of infections. EPA registered disinfectants are proven to kill um, all of the nasty bloodborne illnesses that we all have heard of so many times. And you can also get uh, even plus versions which have the ability to kill strep, staph, and other types of infections. Okay, very, very important. Don'ts, don't reuse tools without cleaning. Like I just said, it's very important to sanitize our tools. Don't use dull nippers or dull scissors. You're gonna get really bad results with that and it's gonna be very haphazard. Never lip, nip living skin. And again, we talked about looking for that white tissue, looking for the differences in color and making sure that the skin we're nipping is not translucent, doesn't have any blood flow to it and doesn't change color when we press on it. That's a good way to identify the skin. And don't use your nippers or scissors for anything other than skin. Even clipping nails, you wanna make sure that you're only using it for tissue because it'll keep them sharp, it'll keep them uh, in good repair. And if you do need a pair of nippers or something to designate for removing 3D art, clipping nails, or anything else, make sure you use an old pair for that. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. 
I'm so excited you tuned in for this video. I hope it helped. I'm sure a lot of you are gonna have a lot of questions. I know that cuticle care is probably one of the most heated topics that there is when it comes to nails. A lot of people have differing uh, positions on it, differing thoughts. So if you have any questions, opinions, whatever, feel free to put them below the video. I love hearing from all of you. I love the feedback. And, uh, and if there's any questions I can clarify or any help you guys might need as you practice, please hit me up. Um, and I will be sure to include that in our next video as a little recap. All right, I will see you guys next week. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notified next time I upload a video. Hope you guys are liking these fundamental tutorials. I'm really enjoying making them and I've got lots more awesome stuff to come. All right, bye guys.